Hi, I'm Congressman Steve Stivers, and I wanted to talk today about the opioid crisis and how it's affecting our kids. Today is National Foster Care Day. I want to recognize the many, many volunteers that are looking out for our kids that are put in the foster care system, many of whom are there as a result of this opioid crisis. Thank you to the foster parents. Thank you to the caseworkers. Thank you to all those people who are allowing these kids to make sure they're safe and that they can be a kid and that they're shown that they are loved. Thank you for helping our children. I have been a foster parent for approximately four years. I have been in and out of doing foster care since 2013. For just over 20 years. 13 years. I've been working in child welfare um, since 2007. I'm a licensing specialist or an assessor with the National Youth Advocate Program for the last six years. I have learned that caring for these kids, it really makes a difference in their lives. Even if we have them for one month or three years, uh, we planted a seed, we've loved on them, and uh, we can help them become a better person. There's a lot about love and letting go. That's probably the biggest, is just patience and giving them time to adjust to your house. I think the system is challenging. I mean, it really is. Workers have a lot of cases. They have a lot of kids. The sheer amount of kids in care versus the caseworkers available, it's not a ratio that's good enough. There's not enough hours in the day to service appropriately all the children that are coming into care. Sometimes foster parents aren't heard or, or we try to advocate for them. Foster parents are, we're with them every day, um, taking them to their appointments and being there when, you know, they're sad and struggling. And to have a voice for someone to listen to us um, is probably the hardest part of, of being a foster parent. Like it feels like I am not doing it right or, you know, I'm missing something somewhere. But despite all your best efforts, you feel like it's still never done. There, there's a stopping point that you have to do for yourself for self-care so that you can keep giving the next day. When it when it works how you think it should and everybody kind of does come together and it's very rewarding um, to see. It's one of the first homes I ever licensed. I had biological children, I had a 10 year old and a teenage son um, and they got this little baby. Seeing when foster parents and biological parents are able to work together. Love the baby and the little guy was reunified with the grandmother. It was great. It was in the child's best interest. I think the one thing that people say to me all the time is, well, I just couldn't give the kids back. When both set of parents can come together and create that bond, it benefits the child. It's, it's not about keeping them or giving them back. I asked about the little guy. I said, have you talked to him since? And their casual reply was, he was here this weekend. It's that I was able to love them and care for them until their fam other family could. Things, times when you're like, this is why I'm doing this, is to see a mom or a family really make the changes they, they need to do to see how much she loves her kids and that she worked really, really hard to do the things that she needed to do. Well, you guys see each other, they're like, all the time. Oh yeah, we meet halfway through the town and the kid for the weekend and he comes over for Christmas and we still see each other. They're very much a family. That is still the family that they have built. That's uh, what kind of keeps pushing me every single day. We are here to build families on love and compassion and understanding um, and not through biology. And this is from a little orphan boy and it says, what makes a family is neither the absence of tragedy nor the ability to hide from misfortune, but the courage to overcome it and from the broken past, you can make a new beginning. And being part of a family, um, I think is just, whether it's something hard or something happy, them just experiencing that with you as a family and seeing how you come through that as a family um, is really helpful to them. What I didn't know is how amazing kids are. They're incredibly smart and resilient and resourceful. Um, and through everything they have been through, for them to be forgiving and loving and still want to have a fun childhood is nothing short of really remarkable. Watching the growth that they make, like they've had some things to overcome. So just watching them grow and watching the progress they make is, is really good, really rewarding. Some of us that are the hardest to love need it the most. So I think sometimes when kids come in, they're, they're angry and you just have to, to be patient with them. 
how they are isn't how they can be. Foster care can be scary. The word foster care is scary, but knowing that you can make a difference in a child's life is so rewarding. So you just have have all that extra love to give and give and receive back. It's, and it's not always hard, it's not always easy, it's not always happy, it's not always sad. It's it's everything. It, it's a really it's not always easy, but it's in the end it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. And it's it will make you a better person. You have an opportunity to change the world one child at a time, but the change can't happen without you. Uh, those foster parents are doing an incredible job. Unfortunately, Ohio has the distinction of being second in the country on opioid-related deaths, almost 5,000 last year. We need to do more. Uh, we're working to fight that uh, epidemic. It's putting a huge strain on our foster care system and a strain on those volunteer foster parents. There's much more we need to do to solve this opioid crisis. I've recently introduced a bill called the Results Act, which will ensure that people in treatment and recovery get the benefit of evidence-based medicine that they're not getting today. The other uh, bill that I've led on uh, with uh, Catherine Clark of Massachusetts, a Democrat, is uh, helping with neonatal abstinence syndrome. That's babies that are born with drugs in their system. We need to make sure we protect those vulnerable population. You know, obviously we want to solve the opioid crisis and reunite those kids with their parents if we can make it happen. But um, we need to do all these things, and it's important today that we recognize the many foster parents that are giving of their time and their love for these children that are affected by the opioid crisis. So